Welcome to Atara Nation. Uh, it is awards time for the uh, Auckland to Atara after their initial and inaugural ABL season. So uh, Austin and Dale from the uh, to Atara media team got together, come up with a list of what we've got: one, two, three, four, five awards mm-hmm. uh, to to hand out. Um, we don't actually have any fancy trophies, but no, yeah. probably, we can probably steal those ones from behind us. Uh, but um, yeah, this isn't just a case yeah. of us two putting our heads together. We've gone through a bit of a process for some of these awards. We'll explain yeah. that a little bit as we get into it. But let's let's start with our Young Player of the Year. Now, we don't really have a set criteria for it. We've come mm-hmm. up with three names. So Luke Henson, Kyle Glagowski, and Ayrton Laird. Austin, give us your thoughts uh, on It really comes down to the definition of it, because, I mean, all these guys are young guys, but Glagowski has definitely played at high levels for a fair bit, so it's whether you want to count him as an up-and-coming player. Um, so, yeah, for me, like, on just pure merits, I would say Kyle Glagowski. Just, he pitched an amazing season. He still is only, I believe, 19, 20. Um, and yeah, he was just a rock in the starting rotation all year. And every time he went out pitching, you just, you knew you had a chance to win. Oh, look, by the time he finished his campaign, he was essentially the best pitcher, one-off, right mm-hmm. in that discussion, one of the best pitchers in the ABL statistically. Yeah. So it was a shame it had to be cut he, short. But it, it has was... to be front and centre when we talk mm-hmm. about young player. I, I thought Luke Henson had, <clears throat> excuse me, had a tremendous campaign. Oh, yeah. You know, a guy that was really in the wider group, it wasn't wasn't guaranteed to even have a spot on the roster mm-hmm. when the season opened. Uh, he pushed his way on through terrific play and mm-hmm. you know, it was a real success story when we talk about the domestic yeah. game here and, and whatnot. So yeah, you know, he, he certainly deserves mention and Eaton Lee, like you know, yeah. this is a guy that was was really on the development mm-hmm. roster for experience to to be around the group. Not to actually contribute. He contributed yeah. and say speed on a number of occasions, didn't he? His speed was so vital for the team and the extra inning situations where base runners are everything. He was such a vital part of this team and um, he didn't get as much chance to contribute with the bat just due to circumstance, but when he was put out there on the base paths, he helped the team every time. And, and the odd opportunity he did get. Yeah, he, he did. So, so uh, look, yeah, he's certainly a player of uh, tremendous promise. I think mm-hmm. based on the fact that we don't really have a whole lot of Exact criteria. I think we go with Kyle Glagowski yeah. as yeah. our young player of the year simply on, on age alone. And sample size as well. Yeah. All right, moment of the year. Very subjective. There are a lot of standout moments across our inaugural campaign. Um, some of the num- uh, ones that have been talked about were the walk off win, the first ever win yeah. for, for the Tuatara at McLeod Park against the Brisbane Bandits. Uh, there was a win against Brisbane yeah. late in the piece there with the Luke Hansen home run and then the, the diving catch yeah. uh, in, in extra innings. And then there um, was the walk-off double from Chris Richards. That's right. Um, as well. And I think you've got to throw the series win too. Uh, the yeah, first the series win against the, the Melbourne Aces at the end it's of the campaign. round great series for us. Which, which one do you sort of lead uh, to? For me, it has to be uh, opening series at home, a first game, walk-off win, looking back at Ayrton Laird and the yeah. speed on the bases. It, for me, that was the moment. It was really something special. Yeah, I think so. I think when you talk about defining moments of the season, the highlight reels, yeah. all that sort of stuff, you're going to remember that first win yeah. for the occasion as much as anything. Yeah. And it was a beautiful sunny day. It was, it was, Everything you know, was perfect all the, about that. The bad weather that they had been around, uh, you know, through the the home series, um, having that that you know perfect conditions yeah. and, the, and the walk off win and, and that sort of spectacular fashion. Hundred percent. We will remember that for a long time. Right, let's get into the uh, so the big awards. So yeah. The awards now. This isn't just Austin and I. Also, no, I have yeah. contributed to this, but we've actually got six. It's been a six prong voting process. Mm-hmm. So we've we've uh, sort of canvassed the the thoughts of head manager Steve Mintz. We've we've got some thoughts from the general manager Ryan Flynn. Uh, we've spoken to a couple of media representatives. So Christopher Reeve from New Zealand Herald, NZ Me, and David Long from Stuff from Fairfax yep. Group. Um, those two guys covered the, the Tuatara across the oh, yeah, whole yeah. campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, we've, we've asked fans to contribute yep. via Facebook. So we put up a little poll uh, there. Twitter it was. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, apologies. Poll. A Twitter, <laughs> yeah, Twitter poll, sorry. Um, and, uh, and then obviously the two of us have yep, contributed uh, through that as well. So and we had all of us giving a um, three, two, one, three, two, one process. The Twitter poll, obviously, it was who came first, second, and third in that. And uh, first would get three points, second would get two, and first would get one. And then at the end, we tallied it all up. Just simply tallied it up, okay. and uh, the, the person with the most number of votes won okay. uh, each of the respective categories. So we'll start with Pitcher of the Year. We've got Josh Coleman to Kyle Gogoski, Brandon Marklin, and Yuki Harada as the sort of four options. Yeah. Uh, each of them had their moments throughout yeah. the course of the year. Uh, let's hear your opinion before we sort of divulge what the what the, the whole group is a, is a whole game. I, I mean, 
in the small sample size, Kyle Gagoski is amazing. The only thing that goes against him in this is, again, it was a small sample size, partially due to the uh, innings limit, and then as well the slight wear and Terry got at the end. So I think that does take him out of the running a bit, just because he didn't pitch enough to really have an effect on the entire year. But those five series, or four series he did pitch in, those were something. Like. Yeah, yeah, um, and then looking at Josh Colmenter, that's one thing that goes definitely for him. He pitched in every series. He was just a grinder, and then... Like he was, he kept us in every game he pitched. Really, like he, you just saw his veteran mentality. You saw the experience he had, and it rubbed off on all the other players when he was out there. Like, yeah, I thought one of the key things for him was when he, when he didn't have his best stuff. I mean, he had his best stuff yeah. on a number of occasions, and he was lights out. But on the occasions where he didn't quite have his A game, he still manufactured a way to stay in a game. Yeah, and kept the team in the game. Yeah, and and yeah, you know, pitched through the dramas we had in Perth in the opening series when mm -hmm. the heroes behind him. Everything was sort of blowing up, and he said it was his calm, measured approach on the mound that I'm sure set all the rest of the team, and they, they got into that, that series and were unlucky not to, to win some games, perhaps, on the, on the back of all of that. What about the, the relievers? Because yeah. the, the, the two relievers, the two standout relievers, Brandon Markham, we know that he's now uh, joined the Kansas City Royals. How yeah. awesome was that? Um, he was he was terrific out of the bullpen. Yeah. Yuki Harada was used a lot, had yeah. an up-and-down sort of season, a couple of electrifying moments where he just blew teams away, and then other times where he, he coughed up a lead. So. Yeah. How do you assess those? It's two? tough with bullpen arms, especially when you're putting them up against uh, starting pitchers, because the starting pitchers just have a much broader body of work. So, I mean, for me, Brandon Markland, every time he went out there, he was on. But, again, his usage was a little limited, so it's hard to say the effect he had on the entire season. Uh, Yuki Rada had a much bigger usage, and I think it would have been enough to put him in the category, but, again, his consistency let him down, so I think... That kind of takes him out of the running a little bit, but when he was on, it was something. Those pitches just made a lot of batters look silly. But again, it was command and control that really let him down at some points. And so if I'm picking up what you're putting down, it sounds to me like it's a Colmenter versus Markland discussion. When you think for me, yeah, yeah, the other two either weren't consistent enough or didn't play the whole season, so therefore it becomes the. the for two me, I think there really is only one at the end of the day that really gets it gets it done in all the categories. And, and Colmenter, is it? For me, it's Colmenter, yeah. Yeah, I, I think Colmenter, and, and uh, both of us. Yeah. And, and, and at the end of the voting, he did. Votes, in yeah. fact, get that. So Josh overall. Colmenter was our uh, Pitcher of the Year for our inaugural ABL season. So that leaves Position Player of the Year, mm -hmm. and then we'll hand out the MVP at the end of it. Okay. So Colmenter's obviously in that discussion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the uh, position players. So the names that were thrown around on a fairly regular basis <laughs> through all of the uh, the different votes, uh, vote givers. Uh, Max Brown, Daniel Lamb Hunt. Zach Clark and Eric Jenkins. So, uh, four players that all had very, very, very good yes. individual mm -hmm. seasons. Max and Brown, all contributed in different ways. Yeah, so I mean, let's break it down. Max Brown consistent across the board. Yeah, I think he, was he was the all round there. Every category, wasn't yeah. he? Led the, league in, uh, led the team in slugging percentage. Yeah. And uh, triples, triples. And I think he was second in stolen base behind Eric Jenkins. So, just an all round, really good player. Um, Max had, yeah, had a tremendous season. Daniel Lamb Hunt. Led the team in average. And he, again, another just all round, really good player. He was tied with Zach on. Uh, RBI as well. So. One thing looking back at Max Brown though is his fielding also was just mm. exceptional. Like you don't expect it from this tall, lanky guy out in the outfield, but he <laughs> got around and he was diving Danny all over move. the place. Yeah, I, I like what Lamb Hunt brought to the the group. So this is a guy yeah. that battled some injury concerns throughout the mm. season. You never saw that come to you know come no. to light during the, the his batting. The arguably got better throughout yeah. the later yeah. parts of the season. He, he was really battling at times with injury and and, and battled through it. Yeah. Uh, Zach Clark, slow start to the year, lots but of promise. Some really of this like what we'd seen in the in the practices and whatnot before the yep. campaign got underway. But man, we saw through the back end of the yeah. season. And that raw teams. power is there. It was there the entire year, and it was just really getting making more contact that really helped him in the later parts of the season. He stole a number of bases as well. Yep. A cannon for an arm, and, and was was yep. a couple of key moments in the field as well. 100%. And that leaves Eric Jenkins, who did a little bit of everything. Yep. And I, I actually thought he might poll a little bit higher, and perhaps in the fan Brand voting Brand. than he than he did. Um, you know, Jenkins hit some home runs. He let off for a large part of it. It was yep. right up there in the discussion for yep. most stolen bases across the league. Yep. So he led the team in, in stolen bases and played phenomenal defense. You know, again. Terrific all yeah. campaign. Just in the in center field, that's where you can just see that it's his home. Like he was just out there, everything looked so casual. He was just able to track back on balls so easy. And then his arm was really impressed me because some of the faster guys like that don't in center field don't have a great arm, but he threw out I think a few runners at the plate and held some runners with just really good throws from the outfield. So 
he was an all around just amazing fielder, great speed, and was a great guy at the top of the order. I think all of the guys in the position player of the year got a three point vote from somewhere. Yeah. Um, but there was one name that was yeah. on every ballot and yeah. featured pretty much second everywhere, and it sums up the season. Yeah. Max Brown yeah, is our position player of the year. Yeah. Just through pure consistency, mm -hmm. he got votes from every person that contributed, yeah. including the fan vote. So. Uh, Max Brown is our position player of the year, which leaves us with a discussion of our inaugural MVP, Max Brown versus Josh Coleman. To your thoughts? It's a tough one again because it's hard to measure a pitcher versus batter. Very different skill sets, very different criteria. And I think the important thing is it's not the player of the year, it's the most valuable player. So it's who contributed most to the team. And for me, I think that makes the difference. And um, so for you, I don't know who you're feeling. Uh, I, I linked with Colmenter, I just thought yeah. he carried the team, he led the team in so many ways. Uh, it's not to say that Max didn't, I think no. Max, Max is a, a senior voice and, and really did have a, a leadership role with the franchise, but I, I just think what Colmenter brought, that, that experience, the big league sort of um, work ethic yeah. and, and you know, what he, he also sort of produced off the diamond, you know, the support, I mean we talked to oh. him I think last week that he was a throwing partner with Brandon Markland yeah. throughout the course of the year. Look at the development we've seen from Markland and, and what he's gone on to and achieve. Then, yeah, from what I hear, he's just a great guy around the clubhouse, mm. just a really good team player, really good leader, and a veteran voice everywhere. And again, I think that's really, like, his pitching was super well here, but that's another place where he really contributed to this team and really helped out. For, for, so for me as well, I think it comes down to Colmenter. So that would have been our vote. It wasn't just us, though. Yeah. So uh, Josh Colmenter is our MVP yeah. uh, for the 2018-19 ABL season, our normal season. Competing in the league, uh, he actually won it by more than three votes yeah. in the end, so it was uh, it was a fairly convincing result. Max yeah. Brown was the runner-up, but uh, Josh Colmenter picked up a number of three-point votes. Yeah. I think there might have only been one or two that didn't give, give him the nod, yeah. and again, he featured on almost every ballot. So, yeah. uh, Josh Colmenter, congratulations. Uh, we're absolutely stoked to, to yeah. say that he is our MVP for the, our first season playing in the league. So we'll try and catch up with Josh in yep. the coming days and uh, let him know that he's, he's uh, been voted as, as the player of the year. Uh, thanks to everyone uh, on social media for, for contributing, for yep. voting and, and sending in your you know, some of your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate that. There should be some announcements in the not too distant future yeah. around uh, the, the manager for the team uh, for season two and some player signings. We hope to bring those to you via the uh, Tuatara channels. But uh, it's been a absolute pleasure to yeah. uh, be involved in, in season one and we look forward to doing it's it again a great and year. keep you up to date with uh, everything that's going on during the off season thanks very much